All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bowen, and I'm a PhD student from the University of Auckland. So today I'm going to talk about um, our work titled Unveiling Climate Driver, the um, Future Shift Analysis in New Zealand. And this is a joint work with um, Julian Dobie, Yung Sin Ko, also from the University of Auckland, as well as Neil Schrempel, who is from the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research of New Zealand. So um, the main problem we're addressing is the increasing average surface temperature of our planet, <clears throat> with an emphasis focusing on New Zealand. So in 2017, it was reported by the Intergovernmental Panel on um, Climate Change, IPCC, um, that the global warming has um, <clears throat> increased, uh, surpassed a 1.5 degree increase since the pre-industrial levels. And for New Zealand, the temperature increase is about one degrees from the last 30 years with 2020, um, 2022, sorry, to show to be the hottest year on record. So um, I know that one degree might not seem like much, there are, but there are actually severe consequences associated with this very small number. Yeah. So just to name a few, um, a one degree of warming translates to roughly about a 13% increase in precipitation per hour for a one in 50 year um, extreme rainfall event. And one the uh, when they were increasing temperature also lead to six percent reduction in wheat production and ten percent reduction in rice production. And all of these um contribute to a lot of financial costs. So globally, climate change contribute to approximately 140 billion USD dollars annually in cost. And then for New Zealand, the cost is around um 13 billion ZD, which is around eight billion USD, I think. Yeah, um, so in addition to the financial costs, uh, costs, there are actually a lot of severe social consequences. So just for example, just last year, there was actually a 1 in 100 year flood in February um, 2023 in New Zealand. And the flood caused 11 deaths, 2,000 injuries, and then damaged more than 300 um, households, as well as causing extensive um, road work and um, power grid damage. So 11 deaths might not be much, but considering New Zealand is a country with more sheep than human, then 11 people actually is a really big deal. And all of these um, have the total associate cost of roughly um, $45 billion just from that one flood. So in our work, we aim to make a step towards reducing the impact of this increase in temperature by proposing a framework that can be used to identify the changes in um, important climate drivers as they change and adapt over time. So um, the, proposed, the proposed framework aims to output both temporal um, and spatial climate driver ranking information, as well as the importance ranking of different climate driver interactions where the ranking of one specific specific um, climate driver not, might not be important, but when um, interacting with uh, multiple other climate drivers uh, might become important. So with all these additional information, um, it, these enables practitioners to make more proactive planning and design targeted interventions to, to address the aforementioned social and economic challenges brought about by the ever-changing environment. So. Again, our focus to identify the shifts in um, future importance across temperature um, changes in New Zealand. So um, in collaboration with climate ex experts from the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research, analysis was conducted across various locations in New Zealand and um, to determine if temperature drivers remain consistent across different uh, geographical areas such as different landlocked towns or like coastal regions. So the data set in this case um, is consists of daily observations across New Zealand from the 1st of January 1981 to 31st of December 2020 with um, at a resolution of 25 kilometers. So there'll be a square every 25 kilometers covering across New Zealand. And we examine six uh, cities, towns. So Auckland, Taupo and Masterton, these are from the North Island. So if for the guys that don't know, New Zealand is pretty much two big islands, one up, one North Island and one South Island. And um, from here, Queenstown, Springfield and Vicago are from South Island. So the figure here just shows that the pretty much the uh, change in average temperature across the um, between 1981 and 2020.
So um, generally, the Auckland has the highest temperature, as is out of these six towns that's closest to the equator. And Queenstown has lowest because it's closest, it's right next to the Southern Alps, which is like a very long mountain range ranging across the South Island. And the yeah, and there's like snow covered all year round. So, um, so in this case, um, we also obtain a set of climate futures from the ERA five um, global atmospheric reanalysis, um, and each of these are obtained for at a daily um, daily temporal resolution, so a data per day, and each data point consisting of date information as well as the lat latitude and longitude of the location. And in total, um, we're looking at 18 different climate-related measurements at various um, hectopascal levels. So in this case, a higher um, HPA is saying that is closer to the ground, and with a um, lower one is higher to the atmosphere. So, um, so. so to obtain the um, climate driver ranking information, we propose uh, future importance analysis um, framework named DUAL. The framework is decoupled into two stages. First, uh, um, an instance profiling stage, where once the concept drift is signaled by either uh, some sort of um, drift detector or manually by the practitioner, all instances are fed into an auto encoder, such that um, the auto encoder can learn a latent representation of the historical instances and output a set of normality and importance labels for all the instances, for both the historic instances as well as the drift instances. The label instances are then profiled into four different groups um, based on normality and importance labels. And then in the second future space mining stage, we then compare the fu um, future space of instances belonging to different groups to kind of obtain the um, shifts in different important features and future combinations. So, um, as I mentioned previously, all instances are profiled into four different groups based on their normality and importance levels. Labels. Um, so these are the four, four groups: abnormal important, abnormal unimportant, normal important, and normal unimportant. So here it's French saying that if instance is considered important, oh sorry, considered abnormal, it means that the data point is different from the data distribution of the original um, non-drafted data. And if it's important, that means that this instance contains future information, which is useful for the um, useful for the um, drifted data. And by learning those, it has a high impact to learn what the data distribution is for the um, drifted data. All right. So, um, so yeah. So naturally, the majority of non-drifted data are expected to be profiled as normal and unimportant, as they align with the non-drifted original data distribution. And conversely, most um, drifted data are expected to be profiled as abnormal and important as they contain useful information. So, and next in the future space mining stage, um, we aim to filter out features and future combinations that contribute to the instances' uh, abnormality and importance. So, this actually achieves by using um, ideas from frequent item set mining, where we um, compare the features of instances of different groups, we can obtain um, different features or future combinations that are frequently different um, from um, different groups. So, and then the, we can then obtain a difficult, well, not difficult, a uh, future importance score using the support, which is saying like how frequent this future is particularly different uh, for um, for different groups. So for example, if we're comparing uh, the future of of instances from the abnormal and important instances against instance, uh, instances from the abnormal and unimportant um, group, we can then obtain the set of futures which makes the abnormal instances important. So which is much saying that which of the drifted instances contain um, important futures for the um, to learn of the, um, which is Sorry, let me go again. So it contains important features, which uh, makes the abnormal instances important for the drifted data. Yeah. Yeah, so to address the various in annual data, we actually analyze the future importance um, shift between different, between um, consecutive decades for each location, spanning across um, 1980 and 2010s. 
So the figure here shows the change in future importance ranking for each of the locations. And results show that air temperature, which is T, uh, specific humidity, Q, um, mean sea level, MSLP, um, and as well as geographical um, density, I think, is contained, uh, geographic geopotential height, sorry, ranks consistently high among the um, across all locations. Um, in contrast, the zonal wind, vertical wind, uh, least set of important futures because normally they are related to uh, rainfall, where it's just pretty much saying ascending air and descending air, and those don't do not really um, contribute much for the <clears throat> for um, temperature. All right. Um, yeah. So in addition to that, we also apply the framework to look at shifts in um, future important across different locations. So this is pretty much saying that um, what are the set of important features that that's specific for each of the locations. And because each of the locations have di different geographic um, uh, features, we can kind of learn that which kind of set of features are more important. So in particularly, uh, if you remember Carvgo, the U, which is um, mirror ordinal wind, which is like a, a side width wind, is more important for Invercargo compared to all the other towns. And this is because of its um, coastal location or near the sea. And yeah, so in addition to that, we look at all the different various um, future combinations are important. So there are one future important uh, important future combination of size five, which is because of mean sea level, uh, sea level pressure, air temperature, geopotential high, and specific humidity. And additionally, all these um, subsets of these features are also important in future combinations. Yeah, so in conclusion, we applied um, our framework to detect both temporal shifts as well as um, spatial future importance shifts across six locations in New Zealand. And we discovered that air temperature, specific humidity, means level pressure, and uh, geopotential height has ranked consistently among the top three important ones.